Okay, so in this video, I just wanted to go over how to use the stage window. Uh, what you do is you have outputs and you have media items that you can uh, lay out. Uh, first, you would add a piece of media and you can snap it into place. And then you have your outputs, which are actually what's being sent to the screen. So these are actually ortho cameras uh, which are being rendered and you know these are actually renders um, and you can these are outputs and this is actually 3840 by 1080 so you, know, you can use this as your output so you're actually whatever you're putting in this stage you're actually outputting which is pretty cool we have some stage settings and we have a UI and a control panel here so under stage, uh, you have a few options. I won't go over all of them. Uh, you can do one of the really cool things is you have the translate increment. Uh, so when you hold hold control, you can drag around different increments. Um, one of the most important things here to note is the selectable type. You have to select the type of element that you want to be able to pick. So you can either do your cues, your output, or media items, or your outputs. So you have to change that to outputs if you want to drag these. But you can also use the keyboard shortcut Control One, and you can see that when it's dashed like this, you can't select it, and you'll still drag around. But when you have it solid, uh, you can do that. So you won't be able to move your media items when you have Control One. So you can also change the snapping distance. So when you're when you have snapping enabled, you can it'll snap uh, at whatever setting you have here. So it would be annoying, but you could snap it at like this really, <laughs> you know, a really far distance. And yeah, it would be it would be really annoying. But I gave that option. All right, that's that's it for the the overview. I can go over some of the example little players that I put together. So I just put together a quick example of how you might use this. In this case, it's relatively simple. So we just have, we have uh, five or four movie players. So in here, on our playback, we just have, yeah, these four movie engines, uh, which are supposedly a lightweight movie player. So what you can do is because each media item, it's just you select you select the top. Uh, so you can I can then take the output of these movie players and map it here. You know, for this, if you hold Alt, you can snap you can scale and in increment. So I'll just go to 50% there, um, and then if I do four. Let's see, so okay, so the, yeah, I have four different, four of the different components, and when I select different ones, I can see them, see the components here, which is pretty cool. And here, actually, it's just it was an example that I can actually of just you know duplicating this null so then I can have the same same movie engine in multiple spots so then when I control this you can lay it out differently so if I could add another output um, and snap it there hit control one to switch over to the media and scale it up so now I have scale of one um, I can lay it out however I want here. So uh, another thing I didn't go over in the previous video was when you do, when you select the media item, you can change the stacking order. So you can do, you can move them up a layer or you can bring to front, push to back, do that. And it shows, it shows your stacking order here. So another one thing to note about this is, 
the way I'm able to select this is internally here, you can come into the stage window and again into the stage window and you can go to the stage settings here, which are not public. You can't control these. You would have to go internally. And when you, right here, I have the selected media item index. So when I change these, it changes here. And so what I'm doing is I'm just changing the reference. So I'm changing, let's see. So just changing the reference to the select. Oh, right here. So yeah, this constant's just grabbing, grabbing that, and I'm selecting the different movie engine based on based on that index. Okay, so yeah, this is my this is my favorite example so far. Um, we have a lister with drag drop functionality, so I can just take one of these videos and you know place it into into our scene, and it automatically sets the resolution here. All right. So in this one, I'm using the functionality of the callback system that I added very recently. So the media item callbacks, the output item callbacks, as well as the drop script. So the idea is you, you put them outside of your components so that if you have this externalized or you have, you won't change anything inside because I'll be you know updating, updating this probably you know pretty frequently. So. Um, you don't want to lose all your settings. Um, so, so how this works is you have the medium callbacks, which, which gets this gets run anytime you add a piece of media. So, and then what I'm doing here is then on destroy. So it, yeah, when you when you delete one, uh, what I'm doing is I have to. When I delete one, I, I have to run destroy on on these. So I have to delete the players here. So and you can you can do multiples as well. I added that, which is pretty cool. So the yeah, I'd create this. I didn't do anything for the outputs here, but the drop script. Um, I won't go into this really, but basically um, the thing that actually, I guess, ships with the with the system is this. So the drop position takes where you drop the mouse and it converts that to the uh, pixel space in here. So that's why we're able to take this and drag it and drop it wherever you, wherever your mouse was. Uh, using that function, so it comes with that, and then you won't have so you don't have to change that. Multi selection is pretty cool. Uh, it freaks out when you have snapping on. So <laughs> if you're doing if you're doing multi selection, I don't recommend having snapping on. It's be, currently behaves pretty oddly. Um, I guess I didn't really show off the uh, snapping too much, so I'm just gonna do that real quick. I mean, it's it's pretty cool. So I got this thing set up so that you can do so there's a line when there's when you're moving at you know x or the y so if you do you can do something like that and then you can do or you could do say something like let's say you do this and then you take this guy and you will you can snap to multiply them here you go so yeah you can you can show the multiple points of snap that you have there, which is pretty cool. And so you can snap to the center. Let's see, so you snap to the center, so it'll show where you select, snap to the edges, snap to the corners. Uh, this took me a pretty long time, so happy with happy with how that how that ended up working out. I mean, aside from you know really digging into internally how a lot of this works. Um, I think, I, I feel like I went over a lot of it. So I think I'll keep it, I think I'll stop there and maybe do another video if people are interested in, in internally how this works.
So thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to be probably adding some more videos, so feel free to subscribe to the channel. So, all right. Thanks for, thanks for watching.